grim-visaged war has smoothed his wrinkled front. He's taken on the works of Shakespeare, Tolkien, and the Marvel Universe, all with grace and gravitas. I will bring you home, old friend. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Ian McKellen performances. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're ranking Sir Ian McKellen's finest film and TV work, and there's a lot to choose from. Blubber, you fools! <laughs> Number 10, Sir Lee Teabing, The Da Vinci Code. A dramatic late night arrival. Mention of life and death. What can an old cripple do for you, Robert? The film adaptation of Dan Brown's Robert Langdon's series of mystery novels forever divide opinion, but McKellen's performance as the Holy Grail expert Sir Lee Teabing is one of the brightest spots in the first installment. Jesus was mortal one day and divine the next. For some Christians, his divinity was enhanced. Oh, absurd. There was even a formal announcement of his promotion. They even Making even the most improbable theories seem plausible with his dignified delivery, the actor's presence alone brings a sense of credibility, forcing viewers to listen up, and and making the film that much more enjoyable for fans. <laughs> Number 9, Freddie Thornhill, Vicious. Freddie Thornhill? <laughs> you probably recognize me from the television or stage. Do you go to the theatre often, Ash? In this short-lived ITV sitcom, McKellen plays an aging, struggling actor living in London with his longtime partner Stuart, played by Derek Jacobi. Freddy is a vain, self-important man, often exaggerating his accomplishments and fame, and his relationship with Stuart is always tumultuous. I was hoping there might be an ambulance outside when I came home, and they would have already loaded you in. However, McKellen's character also has a softer side, shown especially through his fatherly relationship with young neighbor Ash. Vicious didn't last long, but it was a great opportunity to see McKellen let loose with some light laughs and comedy. I'm training for the marathon, in case you wondered why I'm looking so sexy. <laughs> Number 8, James Whale, Gods and Monsters. Mr. Whale, this is such an honor. You're one of my favorite all-time directors. Playing the real-life director of films including Frankenstein and The Invisible Man, this period drama netted McKellen an Oscar nomination for Best Actor, and deservedly so. Playing the filmmaker during the last days of his life, it depicts Whale as a depressed man haunted by his past, whilst also engaging in a fraught friendship with his gardener, Clayton. What you're saying is that this isn't just a case of resting until I'm better, but that my condition will continue to deteriorate until the end of my life. Though the finer details of the story are fictionalized, there is a lot of truth in the movie, and McKellen's performance helps shine a spotlight on this often forgotten legend of horror cinema. Good old you, not Gobbling like a turkey hen. <laughs> Number seven, John Profumo, Scandal. <laughs> The Profumo Affair was one of the biggest scandals in modern British politics, and McKellen brings one of the key players to life in this 1989 drama. As War Secretary to Prime Minister Harold Macmillan, McKellen's Profumo finds himself in a brief but damaging affair with aspiring model Christine Keeler, leading to the implosion of his career and the Conservative government. Eugene says you cheated. Ivanov. He says you were walking on the bottom of the pool. He's a liar. Though a supporting player to John Hurt and Joanne Worley, McKellen damn near steals the whole film, no doubt he would have had he a higher profile at the time. There was no impropriety whatsoever in my acquaintanceship with Miss Keeler. Number six, Sherlock Holmes, Mr. Holmes. I'm in the middle of a project that I'm keen to finish. My wits must be at their sharpest. Portraying a character as iconic as Sherlock Holmes and keeping it fresh is certainly a challenge, but in this film examining the detective's twilight years, McKellen makes the character his own. McKellen's Holmes is a kind but distant man struggling to reconcile with or even remember his past. And as we track the degradation of such a brilliant mind through the story's fractured narrative, the actor is able to deconstruct the famed detective, giving us a truly unique portrayal. How considerate. Number five, King Lear. King Lear. And survive my sight! <gasps> as much as we love McKellen at the movies, he'll always be a stage actor first. But that doesn't mean that those performances can't be captured on film. 
The actor trod the boards to play King Lear in a production which was filmed for TV and shown on Channel 4 and PBS. A noble burgundy when she was dear to us, we did hold her so, but nah. Her price is full. Giving a powerful and tragic performance as you'd expect, McKellen proves his Shakespearean heart. He even went nude for the role, but PBS insisted he keep his trousers on for television. Our love. Our benison. Number four, himself, extras. It's a pleasure to meet you, sweetie. But please, no titles in the workplace. Oh. Following in the footsteps of his longtime compatriot Patrick Stewart, McKellen had a standout appearance on this award winning Ricky Gervais sitcom. Gervais's Andy is cast opposite the respected actor in a play about homosexual romance, leading to some uncomfortable moments between the two. George, can you get us some Vaseline? Of course, McKellen provides the highlight, explaining to Andy his thoughts on acting for one of the thespians' most quotable moments. I imagined what it would be like to be a wizard, and then. I pretended and acted in that way on the day. Number three, Richard the Third. Richard the Third. Oh, I can smile and murder while I smile and wet my cheeks with artificial tears and frame my face to all occasions. As we've seen, McKellen makes Shakespeare look easy. But this film adaptation sees him not only taking the starring role, but also co-write and serve as an executive producer. His performance as the conniving Duke of Gloucestershire is often cited as his finest work, made even better by the film's impressive staging and the relocation of the story to the 1930s. Come to me, Tyrrell, soon, at after supper, when you shall tell the story of their death. McKellen's Richard highlights how figures like him still exist in modern society, showing how they can be charming and inviting despite their obvious villainy. The Bard himself would be proud of this one. Your love deserves my thanks. Number two, Magneto, the X-Men film series. What the hell do you want with me? You, my dear boy. Whoever said I wanted you? Back in 2000, the first X-Men movie paved the way for countless comic book blockbusters which have followed. And McKellen's magnetic performance as the radical mutant terrorist was right at the center of it. You really shouldn't have to ask, Charles. Drawing on the racial allegories of the comics, as well as the actor's own experience with prejudice as a gay man, McKellen's Magneto is still regarded as one of the genre's best villains, laying glorious groundwork for Michael Fassbender's later role as the master of magnetism. This might just work, Charles. Number one, Gandalf, the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit series. <laughs> McKellen hadn't even read The Lord of the Rings when Peter Jackson offered him the role of the famous wizard, but after accepting the part, he immersed himself in Tolkien's world. But for all their cunning, we have one advantage. The ring remains hidden. Imbuing the role of Gandalf with a kind but wise and commanding demeanor, easily shifting from gentle mentor to formidable paragon of light, it's no wonder fans around the world fell in love with this character across two cinematic trilogies. Whether grey or white, Ian McKellen's Gandalf is an undisputed cinematic icon. I found it as the small things, everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keeps the darkness at bay. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.